the front liver plant side split for May. We're just working on the eccentric component, but as always, you want to get those basics down, get the scap shrugs down, get the isometric hold there, get nice stability through the neck, uh, tongues on the roof of the mouth, jaws closed, lips are closed, get that nice hold, and then be able to comfortably kick up into that nice tuck position. But here you're really conditioning this minimal weight on the feet in this position. So it really preps you to make that nice, easy transition. From there, you can do the bent arm injury like that. So you could do a bent arm eccentric lowering down as well, but here's the straight arm and then lowering down slowly to control it. Um, so this month, just working on that 10 to 15 second eccentric knee, so I'm pulling out of it to make it easier to come out of it. And then once you've got that down, you can do the straight arm entry. It's always good to do the pull in, the exit out at a level that you can do well, uh, so that that way you always condition it. So even if the focus is eccentric, you're still getting the concentric, the lifting, and you're still getting a bit of isometric work halfway down as well. That way it keeps it all going. Even if you're really just focusing on that one part of it, it's good to keep all three. And then I'm using more of a 360 degree pull for all of mine now. Um, this one here, just doing that 180 pull and using the pike to transition, which is quite good, that compression position, and then that carries over into the other compression training. And then also here, I'm using the muscle up to enter into it. So that way I can kind of combine my strength training days. So rather than doing a muscle up on a separate day, I'm just getting three good strength training sessions a week. Uh, rather than training every day and then just on my days in between, I just tend to just do some mobility work. I'm teaching and doing, you know, kind of easier versions of the movements to demonstrate. That way I can just kind of focus more and, and kind of combine that together keeps the tissues healthy, gives you a bit more recovery. So then for the planche, here just lowering into that eccentrically down and getting a nice hold there. Works quite well to really get that nice scap protraction, really feel the core working and go onto the tops of the feet as well to make it a bit heavier. It's really just about conditioning those wrists at the beginning in the shoulder position going forward. Here using the band, so lowering down, but pressing up so you get that nice 180 degree. Or if you had it in parallel, so you go the full 180 down and through, but here just going down to horizontal, so a bit past 90 degrees, and really pulling those thighs into the chest so that that way, getting that nice tight tuck, controlling in there. This is a bit more fun, just integrating a bent arm planche, a straddle planche to the tuck planche, and pressing right up, getting the butt nice and high so you open up with a bit more range of motion as well, and getting nice and deep so getting a good stretch through the shoulder there, so getting a good range of motion in that push, as well as training the planche position throughout. So for the side split, just working in from side to side, just working one leg at a time, this is a great way to really kind of condition that straight leg without being too aggressive and you can get nice and deep whereas if you go with the double leg too soon before it's prepped uh, you may not get the conditioning response that you're after it's always important to really let the tissues gradually adjust and get strong in those end ranges and that way it'll open up more so here doing a double leg one, lowering down. So you just want to work to where you can maintain good alignment and you can see the different hand positions you can use to deload it a little bit rather than having all the weight. So if I push down towards the knee, that makes it a little bit easier on the groin. And then just getting that nice isometric and lowering down. So you want to have good range of motion there and good control. I always like doing these releases after I do it so that way it helps the hip feel nice and mobile and active rather than just when you do those really heavy deep isometrics you want to make sure that you walk away where you feel the, the hip joint is not too heavily loaded on one side so in here just going side to side trying to stay fairly upright using the load to assist in it and then here using the load overhead which is a lot harder to keep the ribs in 
to get that my nice vertical trunk and really sinking down into there to open up those adductors in the groin and then the double leg one so it's a lot heavier so working on the eccentric this month get some videos into me uh, let me know how you're going you've got questions submit your videos and i'll get back to you cheers guys thanks